Hello there, my name's Couch Cooper and welcome to my top cyberpunk games that aren't cyberpunk 2077. We are all waiting for this patch to drop 1.07, it's going to come in January, but I thought I'd give you a nice list of cool games to play in the meantime. Two of which I actually bought to put on this list and they turned out to be awesome. Did a bit of research, had a little look, they're all PlayStation 4 and PC and Xbox. I will mention that during the video. Hunt Down is first up, it came out last year, it's an indie game, it's couch co-op two player, it's been on my channel before, it's got some amazing synth, it's got a working gang system, not funny, and some incredible bosses and awesome 8 to 16 bit art. I mean I love the look and sound of this game, the character, drawing and art and self awareness for the genre is top notch. Also, you get a cameo from Jim Inquisition, which is a nice bonus. Now, it's a side-scrolling shooter. That's it at the end of the day, with some huge platform elements, some very cool cover elements, and even sort of hiding in recessive cover in an alleyway or something. But the enemies are amazing. The best things are the lines that everyone comes out with, including the characters you play as. So this one is definitely worth a look if you're into the genre indie games, two-player couch co-op, and love this 16-bit look. The difficulty level is pretty high and you've just had some cool free DLC drop in for it. There was an update when I booted it up recently. So this one's really welcome, not hugely expensive and a big nod to some of those awesome games we all had on our SNESs and Master Systems. Hunt down. Cloudpunk is actually one of the newest on the list and I really didn't know what to expect with this game. I watched a very quick trailer, looked at the name, looked at the art style and thought, Jesus, I need to include this on this cyberpunk list. It's taking a lot from Blade Runner, particularly the car system in Blade Runner. Like it's got loads of flying car aspects to it. It's almost a text driven detective story it's strange it, there isn't any gunplay i was a little bit let down by that i was thinking this was going to be hunting cyber psychos but you're a delivery person but it's unfolding that there's more to it than that you get loads of moral decisions coming up it's very dialogue heavy and the characters are really fleshed out there's nothing really much i can compare this to it's really unique to be fair Good versus Evil, the original, maybe, on the PlayStation 2. There isn't a photography aspect, but there's that visiting, delivery, almost having a job within this universe aspect to it, which I really like that. I like that feeling and the fact that you've got no massive pressure. You're not going to get gunned down in the back of the head. You're going to deal with cool decision making and character building. There's a very cool AI system in your car that's always talking to you. That's a dog and it's she knows this dog from a previous life so to speak there's a lot of intrigue and substance coming out of the story i'm also hugely attracted to this art style hugely it is like a minecrafty polygony blocky cubey world but it seems to work so well with these neon lights right down to the characters and their designs but it's the dialogue that makes this game good and it might be one for people who are looking for a more laid-back story driven game yep okay then i'll do that sir yes sir okay miss you can go your details have been updated maybe another time the controls are also quite unique, where you can toggle between first person, third person, and then even this static camera where it's pulled away and you get to see within all the alleys and buildings, and even this mist is awesome, so Cloudpunk, worth a look. Yes, it's time for Ruiner. Ruiner is a really awesome game. This is on Steam. This footage, I own it on my PC, but this, the Cyberpunk universe, the homages paid, amazing it's 
it's got Neo Tokyo written all over it. It's got some crazy zany characters. And if you've never seen this game before, it should get more praise because it really is top notch gameplay. I'll show you that in a second. But it's the aesthetics and the detail within the map screen and the characters and the dialogue you can get into with randoms is kind of mind blowing. <laughs> Now the art and the character depth isn't even the selling point of the game. This is an amazing twin stick shooter with some awesome slow down mechanics put in to really excite the gameplay. You can actually slow down time, pick areas where you're gonna attack and then release and it just feels so satisfying. It looks and sounds amazing. <laughs> Some of these games I'm super rusty on, this being one of them. You need to be on a sort of trance-like level of concentration to get those awesome combos and to land those really cool shots. Picking up the enemy guns and dealing with bosses in sort of tight areas and just having all of this excellent gameplay around you makes you feel like this is a perfect cyberpunk universe mixed in with a really, really top-notch twin stick. The soundtrack, the gore, the characters, the upgrades, the art style, everything comes together with Ruiner and it's not massively expensive either and it's available on just about all of the platforms. Just a damn shame it's not two player because I think that would work really well. Maybe the time slowing down might cause some arguments. Yes, it's time for the epic Transistor from Supergiant, who are currently basking in the massive success of Hades, and deservedly so. I want to scream about this game a bit because it, when it came out, it certainly had an impact. I'd played Bastion, but I hadn't heard that sort of soundtrack mixed with those visuals and mixed with that gameplay all bowled into this emotion. The game is an emotion, it's fantastic. It's so tranquil, but it's so hectic at the same time. And again, this footage is me just not knowing what the hell I'm doing because it's been five years, but essentially you can pause real-time combat and select different moves to deal with the situation and then just release the button and watch it all unfold. It's a genius mechanic. Annoyingly, I can't show you any of the decent cutscenes in the game because the majority of them are in the front quarter and I'm not deleting my save profile to do, I'm stuck in mid game. But it's got some of the most beautiful hand-drawn cutscene art you've seen. It's, and the music is up there with the top soundtracks of all time. Near Automata Tomata is the nearest thing to this game's soundtrack. That is a hefty accolade. It's also not a roguelike like Hades, far from it. It's got very rich campaign with a brilliant protagonist and backstory. And it also features combinations on those hotkeys. This has got more in common with Diablo than it has with Hades. You mix and match your specials to produce these new ideas with attack pans. And the depth in that is limitless. It's so good. I thoroughly recommend this game. It is cheap now because of its age and it's on Steam and all the rest of them. Transistor. Blimey. <laughs> Blimey. 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 Ghost Runner. Is, is, is the newest game on this list. The three, I've had it four days, and uh, I think my eyes are bleeding a bit. Yeah, I've, I, I kind of, I nearly broke down in tears at one point, because I was like, I've got to show these guys this game, but I can't get through the tutorial. Uh, things, things got better, trust me. Okay, this is my pitch on it. If you can imagine playing as Genji, with a Max Payne bullet time. 
at your disposal. But here's the catch. It can only be utilized in the air, which is something you keep forgetting because if you're on the ground, you can't do it and you're basically screwed. So you need to be airborne. And then it introduces a hook. I hate games that do that. You're like, I've just got my head around everything. No, we've got a winch for you now. The people that are shooting at you, not only do they give you a massive amount of warning with their gun lighting up for about a second and a half, but you, the noise is also delayed enough for you to then instigate the slowdown. So you have all these warnings, but it doesn't help. This is one of the hardest, newest games I've actually played, but I am in love with it. If you'd have come up to me when I was welling up whilst I was playing the tutorial, I would not have said that. I've sort of come out the other side. It's a kind of Dark Souls thing going on here. Its simplicity is genius. I mean, you're only using a few buttons and the introduction curve of power-ups is perfectly placed. I've just been given this new ability that if I line them all up, I can just whack through them with one slice, but it's, it's a risk reward with it, and it's but it's still like the friggin' winches. I've barely got room in my brain to implement it. Ah, free at last. Pleasure to meet you. Face to face, that is. Now. Let's take a look inside. This may feel a little strange. Cyberpunk influence level wise, it kind of draws a little bit on Johnny Mnemonic, especially with that big Tron style head. And I am aware that there's a Counter Strike mod that that leafy tit just plays all day long. And but this is its own thing, and I'm going to leave you with a clean run of a very difficult level. It introduced electrified walls to me. Nice one. Ghost run a nice one. And here we are at the new Final Fantasy remake. Bit of a debate on this one. I put this out to a group on Facebook. I got a lot of people arguing that technically the universe within this Final Fantasy isn't really cyberpunk. It leans towards it, but it also leans towards steampunk and a load of other fictional canons. Cyberpunk is supposed to be like a digital age and Final Fantasy isn't really leaning in that direction apart from that sign. But it's to do with low life high tech in my eyes, and I feel that you do get that vibe with this game. What with the characters you're playing, and against the big corporations, and some of the architecture and enemy types is crazy. <laughs> I need to apologize up the HDR has bled out a bit on this footage. I'm sorry um, Won't happen again, and it also means that this game does actually grab HDR or high dynamic range really well it, Games that don't carry over on the copy mean that they implement it hugely Horizon Zero Dawn was one that you had to turn off So that's really cool anyway back to these enemy types and the sort of angle of this game It is a chance for me to say how fantastic a remake it is. I'm so late to the party with it It was clearing up on the game of the year awards and it's difficult because it is actually a remake But it's so from the ground up isn't it? And I love what they've done with the combat and getting to look at all of these enemies in the options menu and just seeing the way they're put together it is steampunk meets cyberpunk i think there is that mechanical oldness met with this future tech it's an incredible looking game i played the original i remember having the multi-disc version and i remember that train coming in and it's just like a big polygon blue blob and seeing it come in on that intro again the hairs on the back of my neck quite literally stood up. It was an incredible experience to be able to see a game that you grew up with given the most amazing lick of paint ever on all levels with that combat and with those character design models. But it's the stuff you fight and the dramaticness in which you fight them and the music and their animations and their hugeness and special moves and the way they all just look 
It really is an incredible package. And whether or not it's the best cyberpunk game out there is out for debate. I'll see some comments about that, I'm sure. And there's always, guys. <laughs>